The first round of the 2023 NFL Draft is now over. That means it's time for some first round grades. From pick number one to 31, my opinion on each pick and my letter grade for what I give your favorite team. Do I like the prospect? Do I think there's value in the pick? Did they meet a need for their football team? Did they pick a player at one of their greatest needs for 2023 and beyond? That is most important to me when grading these picks. And lastly, if they made a trade, was it for good value and was it worth it? All of that matters in my grade for each pick of the first round. I will also be evaluating and grading the day two picks, so make sure to subscribe to the channel for more NFL Draft content and NFL content all year long. Gronk spike the like button, and now it's time to grade every pick of the first round. Let's begin with the first overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. The Carolina Panthers selected, of course, Bryce Young. Everybody knew it was going to happen. I'm going to give Bryce Young, the Carolina Panthers, for this selection, a B. And the reason I'm going to give it a B, first, they had to trade a lot to get Bryce Young. Like, people forget that they made this trade. There was a lot to get Bryce Young. Secondly, I wasn't as high on Bryce Young as many other people. A lot of people saw him as the definitive best quarterback in the draft, and that's perfectly fine. I didn't. I still view him as a franchise quarterback and a franchise quarterback prospect, though. And I do believe that the Panthers desperately needed to make a move for a quarterback. So all those things are great. I have my questions about how he will be able to play in the NFL at his size. If his athleticism, his arm strength, his quickness will translate to the NFL to make him an elite quarterback at the next level. I do think he's very intelligent. I think he can read the game extraordinarily well at a very high level. Pre-snap, he's already ready to play in the NFL, and he has just different vision, the way he sees the game. He sees it all. So they could have a elite quarterback moving forward, but there's a lot of questions because ultimately Bryce Young is an outlier, whether you agree or disagree. I'm going to give Bryce Young and the Panthers a B. With the second pick, the Texans selected C.J. Stroud. By my surprise, they selected C.J. Stroud because nobody thought they were going to pick C.J. Stroud. Everybody was saying it's going to be Tyree Wilson. It's going to be Will Anderson. It's going to be Will Levis, who didn't even get picked in the first round. It might even be Anthony Richardson. Nobody thought they were going to pick C.J. Stroud. Ultimately, they fool us all. They pick C.J. Stroud, who to me, was the best quarterback in the draft. So based on that, I have to give them an A. They didn't have to trade up to get this pick and they still got the best quarterback in the draft at the position that they needed the most. I think CJ Stroud will be a stud. I understand that there are some concerns entering the NFL. He played behind a great offensive line with great receivers. But when you watch him against the best competition like Georgia, he was able to light them up. And it's because of his elite trait of accuracy. He is the most accurate quarterback I've seen on college tape entering the NFL as a prospect since I've been doing this. Extremely accurate and can make every throw at every level. As long as the Texans can protect him, which they do have a good offensive line, I think he'll be a good quarterback for years to come. Will he be great? Remains to be seen. But I do think he'll at least be good. And I thought he was the best quarterback in the draft. With the third overall pick, the Texans actually traded up. They went back to back. So they got both of their guys at their two biggest needs, which is awesome. They selected Will Anderson out of Alabama. Another Alabama pick in the top three. Will Anderson, I actually gave a C. And it's because of the trade. I don't like the trade. I thought they gave up way too much value. I thought it was an ugly trade for the Houston Texans. They gave up 12, 33, a 2024 first round pick and a 
third round pick in 2024 for the number three pick and the 105th selection. So, I mean, that's crazy. A future first and third and second this year? That's wild to me. So, Will Anderson's a good player, but again, I actually like the upside of Tyree Wilson more. I understand Will Anderson more pro ready to make an impact right now, refined skill set, rushes with a plan, good with his hands, all that. But when you look at the prospect, he doesn't have the most elite upside given his measurables and his physicality. I question whether he has that elite upside at the NFL level. Like Tyree Wilson was a guy that I look at and I say, wow, that guy has all the traits to be really special. I'm not sure if Will Anderson can be really special. I feel like he'll just be good. So I question whether he was worth all of those picks. So that's why I'm going to give it a C. I just don't think it was worth it for the Texans to move up and get this guy. When they could have maybe gotten a, a lesser prospect potentially, but other players for their team to help this roster, which desperately does need some help. So... I love Stroud, not as big on Will Anderson. At the fourth pick, the Indianapolis Colts took Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson to me is a B because I see the immense upside, clearly meets the need of a quarterback, and I like how he mixes and meshes with the current coaching staff. I think it makes a lot of sense for the Colts to take a chance on Anthony Richardson. Perhaps has the highest upside of anyone in this class, so ultimately, this could be an A+. Plus when we look back at it and say, wow, this guy was the next Cam Newton, right? Physically, the most promising quarterback we've ever seen, given his measurables. But there's a lot of risk, right? Barely started in college football, extremely inconsistent, especially throwing the football. Mechanics need a lot of work. Everything from a quarterbacking standpoint is going to take some time and experience. It's going to take great coaching to make this guy work. Maybe the Colts have that, which is why I have some faith in Indianapolis with this pick. But this could also be an absolute disaster. That being said, it was only just one pick. They didn't have to trade up for him, so it can't be that bad. I'm not going to give it anything worse than a B. It only has more upside than a B at number four. With the fifth overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks selected Devin Witherspoon, a lot of people's favorite corner in this draft. And from a eye standpoint, like just watching these corners, one of the most enjoyable corner prospects you will ever watch on film. Just an absolute animal. Like gets after it. Plays with an edge that not many corners play with. He actually reminds me a lot of Rondé Barber. I was trying to figure out who does this guy remind me of? And it's Rondé Barber. The energy, the versatility stands out to me. The physicality stands out to me. His ability to tackle, his ability to make plays, his ability to be a playmaker in the run and the pass game is extraordinary. Then his ability to play press man coverage, perimeter or inside is extraordinary. You already have Tariq Woolen, a bigger guy. Now you have this smaller, shiftier corner who can cover the smaller receivers in the league and I could see Seattle playing a, maybe a little bit more man coverage moving forward more cover one moving forward so I think Devin Witherspoon whether he's inside or outside is a great pick for Seattle I just think he's going to be a really good NFL player given his mentality so there's not a lot of risk here maybe he doesn't have the highest upside of all of these corners but he's a very I feel safe pick that fits the culture perfectly in Seattle with the sixth pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals traded up for Paris Johnson Jr. after trading down from the third spot. And this is where I say, man, I don't know if this guy is worth trading up. I love what the Cardinals were able to do trading down from number three. As I stated with the Texans, I didn't like the Will Anderson pick because they just gave up too many assets to get Will Anderson, not a quarterback, right? Now, Paris Johnson Jr., this is a tackle who I don't even know if he's the best tackle in the draft. A lot of the NFL viewed him that way, but I didn't. I thought Darnell Wright was better. I thought Broderick Jones was right there with him. I, I You know, like Paris Johnson has a well-rounded skill set, good feet, high upside, 
but I'm not sure. Like, I feel like this is too many assets again, even though you got a bunch in the third overall pick. So that kind of lessens like losing all of these assets because the Cardinals just have a terrible roster. Like they need so many players. They need offensive linemen, but they also need corners and they need defensive linemen and they need edge rushers. They need everything, right? They need everything. So I just felt like it's not so much about the player, which yeah, it fits a need, maybe not the biggest need. I thought edge rusher, D lime and corner were perhaps bigger needs for them defense in general, but it fits a need and it will help Kyler Murray and protect your biggest asset. So I get it, but maybe not my favorite selection and maybe not my favorite move of this draft. So I gave it a C, C plus. With the seventh overall pick, the Las Vegas Raiders had Tyree Wilson probably my favorite edge rusher in the class, fall to them in their lap at number seven. Tyree Wilson just has so much upside. I just think it's rare for an athlete of his position to have the bend, the physicality, the power, the length of John Bones Jones, right? And the power that he possesses and all that and the flexibility. I mean, this guy could be the next Chandler Jones, who the Raiders have on their roster. The only thing I dislike about this pick is that that's not like the primary need of the Raiders, right? Because they do have Max Crosby and Chandler Jones. But when you have a great edge rusher with that much upside on the board, you got to take them. You have to take them. You have to try to swing for that home run. And Tyree Wilson might be a home run. Everybody loves his attitude. The work ethic is there. I think he has a lot of room to grow, but I think this guy could be really, really good. So I love the pick. I just would say like corner was a bigger need. So, you know, there's there's some like maybe you love it. Maybe there's a little bit there where you don't like it so much, but I, it's nitpicking really. So I love this pick at number seven. With the eighth overall pick, the Atlanta Falcons actually predictably selected Bijan Robinson out of Texas. I predicted this to happen and many did, just there was a lot of smoke surrounding it. And this is one of those that's really tough. Like, I think some people are going to absolutely get after Atlanta for picking Bijan Robinson, who happens to be a running back with a top 10 pick. And a lot of people are not going to like that because they don't believe in running backs being picked this high. And I get where they're coming from. But at the same time, in what this draft is supposed to be is a weaker draft. A lot of people are saying that the 2023 NFL draft is weak. So why do you have a problem with taking arguably the best player in the draft at number eight? It's not number one, not number two, not number three, eight, okay? A lot of people think this guy's the best player in the draft regardless of position. Can make an impact on all three downs. Plays with power, contact balance, explosiveness, quickness, can make people miss. He's gonna create something out of nothing on a lot of runs for this offense, Arthur Smith's scheme who had Derrick Henry in Tennessee and won a lot of games with a Hall of Fame running back, Derrick Henry. This could be his next guy, his next Derrick Henry, to lead him to success. This is an offense that loves to run the football. This is an offense that is run first under Arthur Smith. So if there were a team that could get the most out of picking a running back high, it's the Atlanta Falcons. On top of that, they like to throw the ball to B. John Robinson. They like to throw the ball to Cordell Patterson in the past, right? So this guy's going to be utilized as a runner, as a receiver, as a playmaker. He is going to be a fantasy absolute legend, okay? So I think he'll help them win games. I do. And he's a safe pick to me, even though he is a running back. So I got to give this a B plus. I don't really care what people say. I still think, yeah, it's it's maybe not their primary need of a corner or an edge player. But man, he's good. I can't just say it's a bad pick. With the ninth overall pick, the Philadelphia Eagles traded up one spot to get their guy, Jalen Carter. Everyone thought they were into Jalen Carter, and ultimately, he fell enough for them to get their hands on him, their grimy little Philadelphia hands. Jalen Carter... It's got to be an A, man. The only reason I don't give it an A plus is there are some off the field concerns and they did have to trade up one spot. Other than that, Jalen Carter's arguably the best player in the draft. I'd put him number one, number two, right next to Bijan, as I discussed. I mean, Jalen Carter's a stud, best defensive player in this draft, powerful. He's got really the best film I watched right next to Quinn and Williams in terms of interior defensive line prospects of the last like five, six years. 
Like, he could potentially be in the mold of a Chris Jones, Aaron Donald, Warren Sapp type of impactful pass rush, run defending interior defensive lineman. He can be elite as soon as this year. He's going to make a difference. He's going to change the way offenses play them. He is a beast, and he replaces Javon Hargrave and gets to play next to Jordan Davis on this Georgia Bulldog defensive line in Philadelphia. With the 10th overall pick, the Chicago Bears selected Darnell Wright. I also predicted this pick to happen. I mean, kind of obvious. The Bears wanted a tackle. This is the best right tackle in the draft. I would argue this was the best tackle in the draft. When you just turn on the film against the elite opponents that he played against and he dominated like Will Anderson, who went, what, third overall? He dominated him. So I'd give this a B, right? It's their biggest need, arguably, that in defensive line. Good player. Now, some argument whether he's the first, second, third, fourth best tackle. Some people would put him anywhere between one and four, depending on your opinion. I think it's a solid B. If you factor in that they got all those picks from Carolina to move back, if you factor that in, I think you bump it up to an A because they get the guy they want probably. Maybe they wanted Paris Johnson, but I think they get the guy they wanted. And on top of that, they get a bunch of picks to rebuild this roster. So depends on how you look at it, but I would say anywhere from a B to an A with Darnell Wright at number 10. At number 11, Peter Skaronsky of Northwestern. Ends up going to Tennessee. Another one that I actually said I would have picked if I was the Titans. So it's hard for me to say I didn't like this pick because I actually, as the general manager of the Titans and what I would do mock draft, said Peter Skronsky would be my pick. Because no matter what, tackle or guard, whatever you think he is, he's going to be good. I'm going to stamp that right now. Tennessee needs a lot of help on the offensive line, quite simply. And... It was the biggest need other than future quarterback or maybe wide receiver, which there wasn't a receiver really to take here, honestly. So I like the pick for Tennessee. Very, very solid. But if he is a guard, you've got to say, ah, how much upside is there? So I give it a B plus because I think a lot of people would say he's the best lineman in the draft, but is he a tackle or not? So B plus for me. At number 12, the biggest shocker of the first round comes from Detroit picking Jameer Gibbs at number 12 overall. But the biggest shocker, does that mean it's a bad pick? Because Jameer Gibbs, I'm going to not lie to you guys. I didn't end up putting out my top 50 prospects, but I was going to have Jameer Gibbs in my top six. Okay? So I love Jameer Gibbs. Like, love this player. He's electric. He is going to be one of the most electric running backs in the NFL, whether that's as a runner or receiver. And I think Detroit could explain this by saying he's an impactful player in every area of the game. He's essentially a value of a receiver, right? This is a Christian McCaffrey type of player. He can impact the passing game. He can impact the running game. Many have comped him to Elvin Kamara, which a lot of this front office and this coaching staff comes from New Orleans. If they view him like Elvin Kamara and he's that good, he's worth this pick ultimately. I think he's awesome. I think he's one of the fastest, most electric running backs in the NFL from day one, can impact the passing game and the running game, can pass block, can impact the screen game, can break away big runs with limited carries. He's a beast. So the only thing that I don't like about this is it wasn't the biggest need. They have David Montgomery. They have DeAndre Swift. Other than that, I love the player. Did he go sooner than expected? Yes, but who cares? Ultimately, I'm going to give it a C plus because I just don't understand what's going on with the depth chart at running back. Maybe once we get some clarity, I'd up this. And I do think like they could have traded back and maybe gotten him a little bit later, right? But I love this player and I can't overstate that. With the 13th pick, Lucas Van Ness went to the Green Bay Packers. A really predictable, boring pick by the Packers here. I thought they might go receiver this year, finally, but they don't. And I think that's a mistake. I think they should have went receiver or tight end. I like Lucas Van Ness. I think he's a solid football player. He's got incredible power, and you can build upon that. He can play inside or outside. If he's going to be an edge, I'm not sure if he's impactful right away because Rashawn Gary's coming back from injury. Preston Smith's still there. I expect Lucas Van Ness to be the edge of the future on the opposite side of Rashawn Gary. 
Maybe he plays some interior early on. He mixes into the rotation. I think he'll be a good football player. I'm not sure he has like the flexibility and the bend to be an elite pass rusher, but I think he'll be an impactful defender for many years. So I gave it a B, B minus, just because I feel they need receivers. They need playmakers on offense, tight ends. And they didn't go that direction for me. At number 14, the Pittsburgh Steelers selected Broderick Jones. They traded up with the Patriots to get this guy. I gave it a B. They needed a tackle. They needed to protect Kenny Pickett. They had to trade up a fourth round pick. Not much, nothing too significant to move up three spots to get their guy. Perfectly cool. I think the Jets really wanted him at number 15. So they get a a tackle with arguably the most upside in the draft, an absolute monster out of Georgia. I like the pick. It's nothing crazy though. I give it a B. Next, the Jets picked Will McDonald, the edge rusher. This was another shocker. Some people would consider it a reach. But when I watched Will McDonald, I thought he was a top three edge rusher in this class. In terms of pure pass rushing upside, I think he's the second best in this class. Uh, The thing that stood out to me is the combination of length and bend. He's not like the biggest freak athlete at this position in the draft. I think that's Tyree Wilson and Nolan Smith. But... I love just the the look of the player, the long arms, the ability to use those long arms in pass rush. He is a nuanced rusher. And then he's also got really good bend for his size. He reminds me of Matthew Judon. And if he ends up being that type of player, he's well worth this pick at number 15. But I do think that maybe it was a little bit of a reach or a little bit of a, I wouldn't call it a reach, more like a panic. Because I felt like they wanted Broderick Jones here really badly. They took a long time to pick this guy. And it felt like they just kind of like, oh, we didn't get the tackle. There's no tackle here. It's not our biggest need. Edge is not our biggest need. We took a first rounder last year. So I think the Jets kind of panicked into this move. But I also feel like it is a pretty underrated pick. So I gave it a C plus because I do like the player. At number 16, Washington Commanders selected Emmanuel Forbes in the first round. I've recently praised Washington for their picks in the first round, especially their defensive line picks. I felt like this one was l- less than stellar. Um, I think it was the worst pick, arguably, of the first round. Because I like Emmanuel Forbes. I thought he was like the fifth or sixth best corner. And there's still Christian Gonzalez and Deontay Banks on the board. Both players, in my opinion, are top 10 players in the class. Like, I love those guys, okay? So for them to be thrown aside and Emmanuel Forbes to be picked ahead of them, I thought was kind of ridiculous. Like Emmanuel Forbes has great ball skills. He's a playmaker. He will get interceptions. He is high risk, high reward. I think there's a lot of boomer bust here because he has a very slim frame. He's 160 pounds, which is the slimmest corner we've seen in the last 20 years coming out of the combine. He does have good height. He does have good playmaking, natural feel for the position, but I question his physicality for the position. I don't think this is a good mid of the first round pick in any draft. So I'm going to say this is a C. With the 17th pick in the 2023 NFL draft, the New England Patriots got the best value of the first round. That's Christian Gonzalez out of Oregon. I gave this an A+. You know, I, I guess you could argue an A just because like they didn't get the receiver that maybe they needed. But was there that receiver in this draft? I would argue, yeah, Zay Flowers is that guy, which we'll get to. But man, I mean, they got by almost everybody a top 10 player at the minimum in this draft at pick 17 after trading back from 14 and getting another fourth round pick that they'll be able to use on day two to trade up for another asset, maybe a receiver, maybe a tackle, maybe an edge rusher that they could really use. And now you put Christian Gonzalez on their depth chart on defense, and this might be a top three, top four defense in the league with a top three, top four secondary in the league. And you've got a guy in Christian Gonzalez who is a perfect prototype of a cornerback. He is a Stephon Gilmore type where he's got the speed to be able to track down speedy receivers. He's got the size to be able to play big receivers. He's got the length. He's got the leaping ability like through the gym. I mean, this guy has all of the traits to become an elite, elite corner in this league. The best corner in the NFL. That is the upside of this player. 
His athleticism is through the roof. He has natural just movement skills. I've never watched a corner and been like, this guy looks like it's easy. The way he flips his hips, the way he's so smooth. And I think Bill Belichick saw the same thing at pick number 17. I know I wanted a receiver, but the more you think about this, a number one corner is, I love that pick. And I think he makes a huge difference on this Patriots team. So it's an A+. Plus. I, I can't not say anything more. And some people are going to say that's biased, but whatever. At pick number 18, Jack Campbell goes to Detroit. Another puzzling pick by the Detroit Lions in terms of like, quote unquote, value, right? But I will say this for the Detroit Lions fans. Jack Campbell is by far my favorite linebacker in the draft. So if you look at it that way, he's probably worth a first round pick. I thought I had him like near the end of the first round, but hey man, it's whatever. Who cares, right? If the player's good, he's going to be good no matter what. And the pick doesn't ultimately matter. I gave it a, a C plus because I felt like they could have used a corner here. I would have preferred Deontay Banks. I would have preferred maybe a defensive lineman at this pick. Maybe Kalijah Cansey at this pick. Maybe you could have went Nolan Smith with this pick. So I had preferred picks over Jack Campbell. But ultimately, linebacker was one of their bigger needs. This is the best linebacker in the draft. This is the butt kiss winner of 2022. He's great in coverage. Good length. Very smart. Um, I can't hate too much. I like Jack Campbell. So I pick 18 C+. Number 19, Kalijah Cansey goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I liked Kalijah Cansey on tape. Um, I think he's got great quickness, phenomenal hands. He's really good on the interior to win as a pass rusher. You question his size a little bit to be a three-down player. Whether he's just going to be a specialist pass rushing early on is a question. But the guy's built almost identically to Aaron Donald. So... In terms of his 40-yard his dash, all that stuff, his size, his weight, very reminiscent. If he can be like a good pass rushing interior force, he's worth the pick to me. He's worth the pick. And I think Tampa Bay needed a pass rush and they needed speed up front and athleticism. So him and Vita Vea is going to be really interesting. I am intrigued. But this is a guy for Todd Bowles defense. I gave it a B overall because there are some questions about the prospect, but I like him. At pick number 20, the Seattle Seahawks with a slightly surprising selection, but they go with the big name Jackson Smith in Jigba out of Ohio State. He's going to be their slot receiver right away and probably ultimately going to become their number two behind DK Metcalf. And I love it, man. This is exactly what I thought the Packers should do. This is a guy that's going to be a wicked route runner. He's going to win in the short and intermediate range of the field. He is going to win after the catch. And he is going to so benefit from DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett's speed to stress defenses vertically. This guy might catch 90 passes as a rookie. Just like how open and how many great matchups he's going to get early on in his career. He's going to thrive. Geno Smith's got another weapon here. And when you think about what Seattle was able to do in the first round, they got two playmakers on the perimeter of their offense and defense. That is going to change their team. Playmakers in round one. So I give them a B plus. The only reason I don't give them an A is Jackson Smith and Jigba, I think is limited as a number one receiver due to the speed element. He doesn't have the speed but he's got the quickness, lateral agility, and he's great in pretty much every other category. At pick number 21, the Los Angeles Chargers pick a receiver for Justin Herbert, Quinton Johnston out of TCU. I'm going to be honest, I'm not a huge fan. I like the need pick. I like that they went with a speed receiver, a guy that can win after the catch. There's some things to like about the pick, right? But I think it's a C plus just because I think Zay Flowers is a much better player and will be a much better pro. I don't have the questions about Zay Flowers in terms of route running, winning at the line of scrimmage, separation, like I do with Quinton Johnston. I would also say that for a guy that is as big as he is, he's not good at winning the ball in the air. Actually, Zay Flowers is better and he's five foot eleven. So I just don't understand why they wouldn't pick Zay Flowers other than the fact that the Chargers just like picking big receivers. So 
I gave it a C plus. I get they wanted to go with the receiver. Quinton Johnson wasn't my guy personally. At pick number 22, Zay Flowers is the pick for the Baltimore Ravens. Like I just said, I would have picked Zay Flowers ahead of this. Uh, he's my favorite receiver in the draft. I think he's the only guy out of these three that I think can play in the slot, out wide, can win at every level, separate and run routes, short, intermediate, deep. He's going to be a dynamic weapon for the Baltimore offense, whether that's as a receiver or a rusher. He's got the swagger that I love, the confidence. It's just unbelievable. And I think the guy's going to be a really good football player. He has the drive to be a really good football player. And I think he's going to be Lamar Jackson's number one target for years to come, at least the next five years with Lamar Jackson, who got signed up. I mean, that offense is looking to looking real electric. I mean, Baltimore is going to be a really good team this year. So I got Zay Flowers, A. Pick number 23 is another receiver. That's Jordan Addison to the Minnesota Vikings. I give this a solid B. I compared Jordan Addison to Emmanuel Sanders. And maybe that's being a little nice, honestly. Like, if he's Emmanuel Sanders, this is an A. But what I meant by that is, like, I think he's ultimately, like, a good number two receiver. Like, he produces well. You can move him all over the formation, outside, inside. I think he's a good route runner. I think he's a very smart and savvy wide receiver. He finds the soft spots in the zone exceptionally well. I think he'll work off of Justin Jefferson exceptionally well. But there's not a lot of room to grow physically, right? He doesn't have super speed. He's not super quick. He's not super big. But he's got great hands. And he's just a really savvy, natural receiver. So at pick number 23, I think a, a good number two for Justin Jefferson a B for Jordan Addison. At pick 24, Deontay Banks to the New York Giants, I thought was one of the bigger steals of day one. Very quiet pick. Not a lot of people with a lot of enthusiasm for this pick, but I give it an A. The Giants needed a corner really badly. Now they've got one that can be identical to a Dory Jackson on the opposite perimeter side. He can lock down people. We saw what he did against Marvin Harrison Jr. on tape. He was physical. You know, he can run with anybody. He's got incredible measurables he's the most athletic player in this class in my opinion quick fast tall aggressive physical this guy has the upside to be the best corner in the draft goes to a system that needs man press corners that can run it's perfect fit at pick number 25 Dalton Kincaid Buffalo trades up for Dalton Kincaid and it slightly shocked me at first but the more you think about it, the more you understand it. First of all, this team has seen what Travis Kelsey has done for Patrick Mahomes. The hope is that Dalton Kincaid can do similar things at being effective versus zone coverage, having that rapport with your quarterback that's right over, you know, the 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 offensive line in the center, right over the middle of the field, easy completions for Josh Allen consistently, the go-to guy other than Stephon Diggs to move the chains. Makes perfect sense. They don't have like a Cole Beasley type player anymore. Dalton Kincaid can also play in that role, right? Win over the middle of the field, short and intermediate. He's a, a willing blocker, not an excellent blocker. Pretty good athlete, great hands, great in contested situations. I like the pick. I would have preferred that they didn't have to trade up for him, but I like the pick. I'm going to give it a B. Then we got Mozzie Smith going to the Dallas Cowboys. I also give this a B. Micah Parsons gave it an A++. I saw that on Bleacher Report. Uh, that was hilarious. Uh, if you haven't seen that clip, check it out. But Mozzie Smith's a monster. Definite first round pick in my opinion. I had him mocked to the Chargers, I believe. No, the Vikings in my draft for what I would do. So I actually had him mocked higher than this at one point. So Mozzie Smith is a beast. I think he's a better pass rusher than he is a run defender, though. He's got to work on some things, but really good hands, really powerful, super good uh, first step off the ball. Dan Quinn can identify defensive linemen. I think they've got a monster on their hands. They really did need an interior defensive lineman, too. Super underrated need pick for the Cowboys. At number 27, Anton Harrison is the pick at tackle for Jacksonville. Slightly surprising. I thought they might go with Brian Branch or like a secondary player here. 
but they go with the offensive lineman, which isn't super shocking when you consider Doug Peterson, where he comes from, Andy Reid, Tree, what he was able to do with Philadelphia and that offensive line in 2017 win the Super Bowl. So Anton Harrison was that final tackle that we knew was going to go in the first round. And some people actually had him rated higher than this. So I can't hate on the pick. I give it a solid B. Then after that, Cincinnati picks Miles Murphy of Clemson. I gave it a C plus. I just, I don't think it's a massive need for Cincinnati. He's going to be the third or fourth edge rusher on this team behind Trey, Trey Hendrickson, Sam Hubbard. You've also got Osai as well, right? So the defensive line is stacked for Cincinnati, obviously building upon a strength, which is always solid, but I question the upside a little bit with Miles Murphy. I think, you know, solid all around skill set, pretty good usage in terms of his length to be able to beat people. I don't think he has the upside of Will McDonald. I don't think he has the upside of Nolan Smith who went after him. So I, I'm not the biggest fan of this pick. I think it's a fine pick, but I'm not like in love with it uh, as much. Pick number 29, we've got Brian Brzee going to the Saints. Uh, this one's risky to me. Like, I gave this a C plus because I see why they made the pick. I think it fits a need interior defensive line. They lost David on Yamada. They lost some d interior defensive linemen in recent years. And this was a definite need pick for sure. Building that defensive line for the future. And we've seen that he has massive upside in his college career. You know, first team, all ACC, right? As a true freshman, not that long ago, but he's been through everything, right? He's been through issues with his inner workings, issues with his family, his sister, you know, issues with injuries. So like, what is he right now? Now he, he had a great combine, great bench press, great, you know, 40 yard dash, showed off his athleticism. I just question, I think it's a, a very, very, very risky pick. Even though this is a upside shooting for upside pick, I think it's also extremely risky, a boomer bust pick here at number 29. At number 30, Nolan Smith, another Georgia Bulldog, the Philadelphia Dogs. Nolan Smith goes to Philadelphia. I gave this an A. I think Nolan Smith has huge upside, Hassan Reddick-like upside, and that's the teammate he's going to have in Philadelphia. Two great speed rushers there, but... You look at Philadelphia, man. They've got like eight great defensive linemen at this point. They've got a two full lines that they can substitute and be just starting defensive lines. It's ridiculous. Nolan Smith, it, you can be creative with him though. You can drop back in coverage. You can blitz him as a linebacker. You can play him as a Sam backer. You can have him on the outside and set the edge. He's got enough strength to me. That's why I felt like he was undervalued in this first round. And he's got great bend, twitchiness, and quickness, and speed, obviously, what he ran, well, like a 4-3. So, yeah, he's a ridiculous athlete. Nolan Smith's an A. 31, I'm just going to go with Felix, bro. I'm not even going to attempt. But the Kansas City Chiefs pick Felix, the edge rusher. I think this is a solid need pick. When you looked at the board at the time, like the offensive linemen were all gone that were projected first round. The receivers were all gone that I thought they could go with. So they went with an edge rusher. You can always use more edge rushers. They could have went with a corner here maybe. I would have liked that as well, but edge rushers perfectly fine with me. This was like the next guy on the board for many people. Um, good traits, good upside, good athleticism. I think it's going to be intriguing to see how they utilize Charles Omenihu, who they signed in free agency. This is somebody that I think won't start all the time, but I think they'll put Felix on that edge on third down sub package to rush the quarterback on the opposite side of George Karloftis, and then they'll move Charles Omenihu into the middle with Chris Jones to complete that uh, sub rushing package. So I like what they can do here with the mixing matching of their pass rush with Kansas City. So ultimately not a bad pick. I gave it a B minus. Like I'm not super pumped about it, but it was a solid pick overall. So those are all my grades for round number one of the 2023 NFL draft. Gave you as much insight as I possibly could with each pick and my thoughts and opinions on each one. Let me know your thoughts on your favorite team selection of round one in the comment section below. It's Mitch. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you tomorrow for round two, round three, reaction and analysis. Peace.